Good morning, friends and relatives. Is there anyone out there? Okay, we got two people, yay. This is Lynette Tubles. I'm live in our Yellowbird Garden, Yellowbird Lifeways. And this is our food sovereignty program, Food for Life. Just wanna thank you for joining me this morning. We're gonna have a short program today. We've been so busy and um, with you know our food sovereignty program. And now it's really nice to see all of the gardens, all of the pictures of all of the gardens in our community and just all over. So I thought um, I would come to you live today in our Yellowbird Garden and just give you an update. Uh, we do, I'm not gonna take too much time this morning um, but I want to thank thank you for joining us. Let's see. Good morning, Angel. Um, good morning, Al. Al and Little Coyote, who is also on the Yellowbird Board of Directors. Good morning, Al. To you and Elizabeth. Yeah, thank you for joining us this morning and and share if you. Um, if you would like share with your friends and family or anyone that um, wants to garden that likes garden good morning Georgianne yeah thank you all for joining me this morning um, like I said before this is food for life our food sovereignty program and um, I'm just going to share a little bit this morning from our garden and I just wanted to start out this morning with um, a meditation my daily meditations that I read and the last couple times I I, um, I read I read one here so I'm going to just go to the page I think today's the 17th right and I always try to read daily meditations it just helps me um, put me in the right frame of mind to meet my day helps me like set my intention for the day and just puts me in a good a good mood good frame of mind and so I just want to um, want to share and a lot of times uh, you know you can use the analogy of gardening in a lot of our meditations you know gardening really helps with your not just physical because you get in good physical shape gardening you wouldn't think so but you know I I've I've uh, gotten in good shape <laughs> this spring with all the gardens we've done and but the emotional and mental and spiritual aspect are just as important and when you're in the garden, you know, it really helps calm you, center you, takes all your stresses away. You, you're just present in that moment. And that's what we call centering. When you're taking that journey out of your head, you know, the journey out of your head to your heart and then further to spirit. And that's what, you know, gardening does. And there's a lot of other ways you can do that too. Like I enjoy hiking and walking uh, out in the hills and that does that for me. But you have to have some sort of release every day. You have to have a release and you have to fill your mind with good things. So um, good morning to everybody. Good morning, Chante. Um, so I am going to read out of this book here. It's called, if any of you want to buy it, it's called The Language of Letting Go. Um, and it's, it's, it talks about, it says daily meditations on codependency. So Melody Beattie, and I love this author. She has a lot of really good books. So I encourage you all to, um, to get this book if you can. And it just, I read it every day. And if I don't, um, I'll go back and I'll, I'll catch up. So today it says, love in words and actions. Many of us have confused notions about what it means to be loved and cared about. Many of us were loved and cared for by people who had 
discrepancies between what they said and what they did. We may have had a mother or father who said, I love you to us and then abandoned and neglected us, giving us confused ideas about love. Thus that pattern feels like love, the only love we know. Some of us may have been cared for by people who provided for our needs and said they loved us, but simultaneously abused or mistreated us. That then becomes our idea of love. Some of us may have lived in emotionally sterile environments where people said they loved us, but no feelings or nurturing were available. That may have become our idea of love. We may learn to love others or ourselves the way we have been loved, or we may let others love us the way we have Oh, let's see. Or we may let others love us the way we have been loved, whether or not that feels good. It's time to let our needs be met in ways that actually work. Unhealthy love may meet some surface needs, but not our need to be loved. I'm going to switch the page here. We can come to expect congruency in behavior from others. We can diminish the impact of words alone and insist that behavior and words match. We can find the courage when appropriate to confront discrepancies in words and actions, not to shame, blame, or find fault, but to help us stay in touch with reality and with our needs. We can give and receive love where behavior matches one's words. We deserve to receive and give the best that love has to offer. Today, I will be open to giving and receiving the healthiest love possible. I will watch for discrepancies between words and behaviors that confuse me and make me feel crazy. When that happens, I will understand that I am not crazy. I am in the midst of discrepancy. That was really an awesome meditation because a lot of us, you know, were affected by trauma um, and historical trauma that goes way back. And so a lot of our grandparents and parents, um, you know, and right now, coming to light is the whole issue with the residential schools and boarding schools and how our people were so abused and you know we we knew this and in a lot of our communities we're addressing it through different ways you know and but now I think the world is just like they're shocked to find this out but it's you know, I'm glad it's coming to light and I'm glad the world is, is seen now and hopefully they can understand, you know, how that trauma has impacted our people from generation to generation and our, our grandparents and our parents. And so now it's up to us to heal and by acknowledging it and, and start to look at our behaviors and a lot of us learned unhealthy uh, ways and what love was and so we think it's normal and so now it's time to heal and to learn healthy love what healthy love is and i think we have to learn to love ourselves and when we start loving ourselves and taking care of ourselves then we can love others we can love others from a healthy place so that was an awesome meditation that I read today and um, just want to thank you all for for joining us this morning and I'm gonna flip my camera around so you can see the garden here okay yeah I'm just sitting here um, at the edge of my garden and so you can 
You can see how much it has grown from the last time I did this. And um, yeah, so the corn is really coming along nicely. Last week we had a program um, where uh, Jennifer Young Bear and her mother Susan Paulson, you know, talked about uh, Corn Mother and their creation stories and how, you know, they would they created songs and they had songs and they created new songs in their garden as they're working in their garden and as they're planting and I thought that was just beautiful. And so, you know, corn is real important in in our cultures and I know, you know, for for um, the Cheyenne people, you know, corn is is part of the culture as well and we use that you know anytime we have ceremony we we have um, deer meat corn and berries and you know so it's real important to to have that and so I'm just gonna take a quick walk you can see all my flowers are just really blooming so here is a row of those are all tomatoes and, um, you know, because we had so many starter plants and we had starter plants left over, I just been trying to squeeze everything into this garden that I can. So, and here's all of our, our greens and lettuces and kale. And as you can see that I need to probably take that out, harvest uh, some of the lettuce there and take that out because now it's starting to go back to seed. And here is, are um, these are all me melons like cantaloupe, musk melon. See how they're really growing, and this is something that we just created. I was trying to find a space because all of these would go on the ground, and I thought I'm going to try something. So I told um, Anna, who works with me, I gave her, you know, I told her what I wanted, like what I envisioned, and then she created this. So really simple. You can do things like this, you know, just be creative. So I hope you can see this, but there's my melons. And we just put the T-posts, two T-posts, and then we just use uh, fencing. And then we, we hooked it to the bottom of the box with a staple gun. And then we, you know, hooked it here with brackets. And then now it's, uh, we had to coax it to climb. So we just moved the vines up and then now it's just climbing. So I will, you know, so it's gonna climb up to the top and the melons will be on there. So that way it's not all, all on the ground. So you can, you know, be creative like that. And, um, and then there's some more of my flowers. And then over there is all the tomatoes and i'm actually getting uh tomatoes like these are these first two right here are the um cherry tomatoes so i don't know if you can see i'm going to try to get past here okay see right here they're starting to there's a little one right there there's another one so they're starting to uh get tomatoes on there and in the back too, there's some big, big tomatoes. And then over right there, you can see all of my squash there. I did a row of squash and those are butternut and acorn squash. And they're, those are huge. They're this, you know, I haven't uh, looked in there to see if there's anything growing, but I'm sure there are, cause there's a lot of flowers in there. So, you know, they're just really growing. Everything is really growing. And here I have some mint. And this is chocolate mint. And oh my gosh, it smells so wonderful. And it does smell like chocolate too. So I'm going to um, let that grow a little bit more. And then I'm going to harvest all the leaves. And um, save those for tea. And you can even put those just in water. 
and have you know that mint tea with the with the hint of chocolate and right now too i want to say um you know all the mint tea the wild mint tea is ready too so you can be harvesting your wild mint tea now and part of our food sovereignty program includes that harvesting and then there's just some sunflowers and then see here these are all peppers different types of peppers and you can see they're all growing too i think those might be jalapenos uh, i think these are poblanos and oh, i'm not sure what those are i think those are like chili peppers these are going to all turn red yeah and these are the the sweet peppers the, these are going to get real big and then i got some beets there that are coming along nicely and then as you can see this is the garlic and i showed before um these are ready to harvest now so i'm going to be harvesting these so i'm going to try to either take some photos or do a little video so you can see how when i do harvest and i might post that so back there we have more squash those are zucchini yellow squash hubbard um oh and i got pumpkins back there so all along the fence line and then i wanted to show you here on the other side so we did the same thing with this fence so on that side was melons and then over here these are um, sugar baby watermelons so you can see you know these ones i had to really coax them to go up the wire so they're starting to go up now but that took a little bit but i wanted to show you right there can you see there's one growing right there gosh so beautiful so exciting when you when you start seeing the vegetables grow and i've been watching everybody post their pictures of some of their watermelons growing and it's just exciting so these are my strawberries and i have cilantro in here too and see my strawberries right here yeah so there's i'm actually getting strawberries out of here here's one that is probably almost ready to be picked yeah so and then right here this row is uh this is all of the cucumbers so i wanted to do something kind of like that so the cucumbers could grow up too but i didn't get to it so we're, we're just going to leave these on the ground this year but every year i try to improve try something different something new um to get you know more out of the garden and to just have it more efficient and and also to have it beautiful i love that when it's the beauty of it so here you can see all of the the flowers no cucumbers yet but there's a lot of flowers and that's how you know the flowers become the the vegetable for those of you that are new to gardening. So those flowers, when you see that, those that's what um, becomes the vegetable. So here I have cabbage and cauliflower. And something got into my garden and ate, so I had to replant. Good thing I had some extra. I had to replant some of the cabbage. So, you know, same thing over there is the purple cauliflower I grew quite a bit of that this year and broccoli and cabbage and I had something that was getting into my cabbage so I'm going to take a look here and see okay yeah see this is where the cabbage is going the center that's where the cabbage is going to grow so you'll get one cabbage out of there yeah and then these are all the broccoli so they're going to come up and then you'll start to see the the plants come from the center the actual broccoli will come from the center 
same with your your um, cauliflower it'll come from the center so and then over there I have uh, some sugar snap peas that we just threw in the ground and it's coming up so see right there is is one right there those are starting to come up now or grow and then potatoes I wonder for those of you that are part of our yellowbird food sovereignty garden program how are your potatoes doing we gave out a lot of potatoes this year and I have let's see one two three four five rows of potatoes and I grew all the different varieties so I grew red potatoes white potatoes yellow potatoes and purple potatoes and so I'm real excited about the purple potatoes and uh so I'm real, I think these, this row right here is the purple. You can kind of see in the leaves, they're kind of have a, a um, hint of purple in the leaves or in the stems. So, and this is so beautiful. That's a bean, whole beans, so beautiful. And then right here are my onions. You can see how how well they're growing. They're really coming up good. And then my um, carrots. And in some of the rows, the carrots didn't come up. It's kind of um, empty. So I went ahead and about a week ago, I planted, I just um, put some more carrots in their seeds and you can see they're starting to come up right here. I don't know if you can see that. You can see they're starting to come up now. So you can still do that, same here. So I fill that in. So I am going to flip this around. Okay, so that's kind of where the garden is right now, but right, it's re really, really hot here. And I know for a lot of the country, it's unseasonably hot. Like today is supposed to be 102 degrees. So, when it's like that, you you almost have to water your, if you don't have like a drip irrigation system or something like that, you're going to need to water your garden twice, twice a day. And especially your flowers and um, these flower, are these garden beds, the boxes, uh, they need, they they dry out a little bit faster. So you're you're going to need to make sure they're moist. And um, I think I said this before, but the best way to tell how much water is to um, put your hand in there and dig down and see how far down the moisture goes. And when you water, you want to hold your, um, you don't want it to be at full, full um, pressure. And you want to water, you want to get down to the roots. So that way you're not wasting water. It's just sitting on top of the plants, but it's actually in the ground. So, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but you're going to see the benefits of it. And you can see, you know, my garden, that's how I, I water. And I had, um, I had someone that's part of our program and he said that he, I asked him how his garden was doing. And he said that they're growing, but not real fast. And I said, well, I, you know, I said, how often do you water? And um, he said, well, I just water a little bit once a day. And I said, I think you, you know, your plants probably need some more water. So, and then the plants that are in the ground, uh, the same thing, you know, get a little shovel or hoe and just di dig a little bit and see how the moisture level is in the ground. And that will tell you how much you know where the moisture is if you need to water a lot more or you know if they if they're good they just need a little bit more so um you know so i encourage all of you to to water i'm going to flip this back around yeah so you know water your plants real good 102 to today here on the northern shine reservation i'm just going to show you see that is pretty moist down there it's pretty moist and 
last night I watered really, really well because I knew it was going to be hot today. And um, I'll probably just give them a little bit more water here and, and just a bit. And then you don't want to overwater either. So you just want to give them enough. So if, if it's like sopping wet in there, then you're overwatering them and your plants will start to die. So I, I was actually doing that. I didn't realize I was doing that with um, over here in the center there with the cabbage and broccoli, that center part there. I was overwatering it and a couple of my plants died. And so I... I went over there and I, it was just like mud because <laughs> I was putting too much water in there. So always check your soil. That's the best way to tell. And potatoes and tomatoes, they both use a lot of water. So make sure, you know, that they're, they're watered. And so I hope uh, the other thing I love seeing is just driving around town and all the gardens that we put in. Just seeing all the flowers because we gave away quite a few flowers as well. So, so that's that's it for today. You know, just water, and I hope you guys like that meditation today. And um, and we're getting ready for. You know, right now you should just be weeding your garden. Um, you might be harvesting, start to harvest some stuff. And, um, and so we're going to have some programs coming up on, on harvesting, on canning. And also, um, you know, it's, it's berry picking, it's going to be berry picking time. So hopefully we can get some, some people to, um, you know, how they are, or I might do it too if I can't get anyone. Sometimes people are um, shy. You know, they don't want to cam come on camera. I've been, and uh, some of our elders too, I would love to have them come on, but but uh, I'm glad that they, they share their knowledge with us. So, um, and then I in turn can share it with all of you. So we're always learning, we're always growing, and we're always healing. And I wish all of you a beautiful day. And um, we'll see you next Saturday on Food for Life. Take care. Bye.